co-host Isaac Simpson and Maria Perry, I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Short on Shorts. Our special guest reviewer this week is Jason Rose, producer of films like Chef and Jane Got a Gun. And the fourth film we reviewed was Drifters, directed by Anu Valia. Make sure to check it out before watching our review at the link in the description below. Enjoy the movie and our review. Final film, uh, complete change of tone, genre, direction in every sense. Uh, it's called Drifters. It is written and directed by Anu Valia and it is starring Sarah Goldberg. Um, it's an experimental slice of life film about the day-to-day -day struggles of a actress in New York. Uh, it's actually unclear if it's New York, but um, it won the Special Jury Award at the New Orleans Film Festival and they won the Best Experimental Short at the Aesthetica Film Festival in the UK. Um, I just have to be completely straightforward and honest. This is one of the top two or three films that we have reviewed on the show. For me. You. No, for me. For me. <laughs> Immediately she would Yeah, thanks. We've already I had this it. conversation. Uh, <laughs> and um, l the reason why is that, I, well, like I said, I watched it twice. And this happened to me, with movies I really love, this tends to happen to me. I watched it once and I was like, this is, what? Like, I don't even get it. And, but there was something that made me really want to go back to it again. And when I watched it again, I just got it. The last, that happened to me with Mulholland Drive, and this is actually yeah, kind of like I a had, weirdly Mulholland Drive-ish yeah. movie. In that it's, to me, it was really about a really, really honest view of the life of an actress, right? And so many movies about actresses are so fluffy and, you know, like funny, you know, isn't it so cute how ridiculous this all is? Whereas this was like a really dark, kind of depressing view of the life of an actress and how completely commodified these women who are trying to make it in, in New York or in LA or whatever are and they're just getting like herded around and pouring out their souls and getting used by different types of men for different weird purposes, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, you know I cannot stand feminist things, this new age feminist stuff, can't stand it. But this to me really spoke as a feminist movie because it was like a really clear portrait of like mm -hmm. how commodified these people are, for it, kind yeah. of, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, um, I agree with all of that. Um, that was very clear um, to me. Um, I liked this film a lot. Um, I thought the acting was very good. I think it was an interesting story. I, you know, all the things you said about the different little subtleties of the way that, um, that um, women get treated by men. Um, and oddly, yes, it was about uh, an actor, but it didn't feel like it was specific to, that, to the entertainment industry. Um, it was more about the way that uh, they get viewed generally by men, I think, in a way. My problem was that, um, and you're gonna disagree with me, <laughs> I think. My problem <laughs> was that no, 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 it's not a big deal. It's just that... <laughs> no, but when you disagree, a, we lean as back. A, as a storyteller, <laughs> I, I, I very much believe in the idea that, um, that you owe the audience the movie that you set up. And we are in the first... I don't know how long it is. I'm just going to guess. I'm going to say it's about the first three minutes of the movie. We are set up to believe that this is going to be some sort of ensemble movie that is not focused on anyone in particular. And then all of the sudden, out of this, you know, out of this... Um, amalgamation this of different women. Am yeah. Amalgamation of different women. All of a sudden, for no particular reason, we're being told to focus on this one woman, who, by the way, is really compelling. I enjoyed her performance. She's, she's another one of these people who just... She's compelling. I liked watching her. She, I believed her. She was interesting. Whatever. But... From a storytelling perspective, that was, it, it, I mean, I had to force myself to forget, right, so that I could just watch the movie and enjoy it and notice all the great things that it did that you said that I agree with. But, I mean, that's such a, that's, that, that's like, that's like storytelling 101. Yeah. Right? Don't, don't tell me it's going to be this movie and then give me a different movie unless 
you're doing it on purpose. Well, what made and you this think movie, it was telling you to be? And, all, and also, I think they kind of did do it on purpose, right? That, I mean, this is sort of this doesn't. Well, if they did, then that any... wasn't clear to me. Wait, but why do you guys think they were? It was. Why do you think it was telling? You, when did it tell you it was going to be an ensemble movie? Because the first three minutes of the movie are this collection of different women, right, who are all auditioning for the same part, and they're all like wildly different women, yeah. right? Wildly different so ages. So you thought it was going to be all of them doing something? Well, that's what the director is telling you. That's what the storytellers are telling you that it's going to be that. Now, you can have that beginning and then segue into a story about just one person, but this didn't do that. It was here's a bunch of people. And the person who we follow was one of the people, and then all of a sudden we're just following one of them, and there was no, there was a, this massive disconnect. This is, this, I think the answer is this is a matter of time, because if you had this for like 10, 20 seconds, and you really got that point across, you didn't sit on it for too long, it hit all these different people, men, women, whatever. If it did all that, your brain would be like, you know, so many things at once, and then narrows to one. Right. It, instead, they spend too long on that, and you mm -hmm. think you start to go, oh, is this what I'm watching? I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I understand what he's saying. It's, it's too long spent on an amalgam of people instead of right. one person. I'll take 30 seconds of it because it right. sets something up. You start to go, oh, it's, it's about all these people or exactly. it's about none of them. It could be just this, this, and it becomes a very sad, cold story. So in a way, it's good. I just think it should have been shorter because it was mixed. I think right? that's one way that you could have, uh, that, that is definitely, you could have mitigated the issue by making it shorter, right? You that, that is those definitely true. Scenes, sure. Or just provide some reason, anything, and it doesn't have to be a big thing. It's, it could be a little thing that you do in five seconds that tells me why out of all of these people I'm going to now start following this one. But isn't that kind of the point? The point is that these, in the beginning and the end, they're all unique butterflies but they're completely faceless because they're being herded around in these groups to give the See same that, lines and I do the same thing. So it's, it yeah, goes from true. like anonymity to specificity, but really it doesn't matter who this woman is because they're all going through the same thing. Well, then and then they not? all end up in the same thing in the end. You know? If that's the point though, by the way, that's a lovely intellectualization <laughs> that you have lopped on top of this, Damn. but it has nothing to do with the emotional experience of the story. Not that I disagree with you, but yeah. I mean... No, the beginning threw me off a little bit too, the first time. I mean, that really threw me off because I didn't really know what was happening. But then, right. you know, I, I don't know, I, it ended up working for me. But all the things that Isaac said are also true. It is, and it is a very, very watchable movie, and it has, uh, and it does make um, what what you you guys know that I'm one of my pet peeves is um, every story has already been told, so you better bring something new to the telling yeah, it of it. A lot. And it definitely that it was. It brought subtleties to the telling of this story that we haven't seen And it before. didn't beat you over. What I loved about it so oh, no, much is sure. this is a political film, right? But it didn't beat you over the head with it for right. one second. It was just like, I'm showing you this. It's, I'm yes. not even judging. The only part that was a little judgy was the guy like leering at her on the, on the, the bus. But like everything else was just like, that's real. And you know what I mean? Like, you can't argue with it because it's like, I'm just showing you the way that it is. You know, also, the, the, to, to go to a more technical standpoint, I think that before we, I, know I need it's to okay. get to your I, I promise you'll hear I am, me. I'm waiting for this. But I, uh, before you hit that, one of my favorite parts about this is the cinematography, too. It's very, oh, yeah. it's very patient. This movie really takes its time to the point where I almost like, Woody, and then it'll change, right? right? So it has this very... I don't know, the, again, very traditional, very nice, the tracking shots, the turning shots. One of my favorite scenes is when she's, and also the acting is so good. You, you feel honestly like yeah. they're just ad-libbing this because you have the teacher and her not quite seeing eye to eye. It's not overblown, it's not undercut. It's just sort of this perfect, like, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. And he's kind of manipulating her in this weird way, you know, and like kind of oh, getting I thought he was the fix. director, not the teacher. Yeah, the director. Well, direct, sorry, yeah, director, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, but it's not, he is, but it's not over... Because it's not it's, overdone it's all at all. So yeah. It's so subtle. It's so subtle. There's a That's scene when so beautiful about it. The, a lot of it can be point and shoot in a very artistic way, but there's a scene where it just drops, and then you see him kind of here. You see her hands gesturing and moving, right. and then she comes down to his level, whether that's symbolic or not, and you yeah. see her face. And after that, it's just the eyes the whole time, just the eyes. And you yeah. don't. There's subtext. I wasn't exactly sure for the first time watching it, but there's subtext there, and the acting was again so good it kind of kept it up either way. So right. the cinematography, and even at the end, I didn't, again, 
I had to watch this twice <laughs> to really understand what was going on. When she goes into the what I can assume is a cattle call. It's an like, audition, right? right? Yeah. It's a mass audition. But it's a yeah. cattle, like in the sense yeah. that there's like 50 women there. they're all just there. sitting. It's, that shot is so yeah. And did you notice that they were all over. dressed similarly too? Yeah. 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 And they're all talking and they're all good. I mean, you know, the camera's on them. The, you get one pan and then you sit on that for right. five minutes or yeah. something. Not five, but like a long time until it's over. It's a very like, again, I didn't have a very good reaction in the beginning, it's but like the more Hannity. I saw it's it. It's very like Michael Hannity. Yeah, yeah. So. And it's also weirdly sensual, I think, which I think was on purpose. Like the shots that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, it's her midsection. Yeah, it's, it's weirdly, and, and I think that that was, that was a unique way of communicating the sort of, <clears throat> you know, the sort of over-sexualization of women. What was really and, going on there, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, Maria, what's, I we gotta get I think it's interesting there. because it does feel like, it really feels like a woman's narrative. And you can tell even without knowing the name that it's a woman filmmaker. And you kind of pick it up in a lot of little things. Like, I think the first thing that really hit me, and the beginning didn't bug me at all, but the one thing I noticed was I was like, wow, well, this was probably a woman filmmaker because there's women of all different races and body types in here. It wasn't like, you know, when you get notes from a guy on who's going to be auditioning, it's always like, I want specifically someone who looks like this. Hmm. Um, but usually when you have women doing casting and women who are filmmakers, you've got a much more open sort of net. Um, so that was like the first thing that cued me off where I'm like, oh, okay, oh. that's interesting, that's different. Mm. And it's the same at the end too, because again, normally when you have casting, you have, you know, white woman in her 20s to 30s, but there was kind of a huge age range. There was, there was different range. Although we did focus on the white woman in her 20s. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes. true, that is true. But yeah. I mean, the fact that there was that there was kind of exciting and impressive. Mm -hmm. I actually thought that that was, that, it's so funny. Um, and maybe it is a gender thing. See, I read that as, um, I read that as sort of a commentary on insensitivity. Um, you know, and, and, and another sort of form of exploitation, I guess, because if, you, if you're that far off from knowing what you want, that you're, you're, you've got the, the cute blonde girl and you've got the African-American woman who's about the same age, and then you've got the woman who's clearly in her 60s, you know, I mean, that just, you have no idea what you want. You're not even close. I mean, that didn't... Like artistic I mean, liberties at that point, probably. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it just felt... It, that, that felt like another form of exploitation to in me. It's in its own way, yeah. And that, yeah. that's probably somewhat interesting. Maria, what did you think of the film in, in general? I'm I'd waiting for this. To hear. I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was oh. a very beautiful film. And again, because it feels like such a woman's narrative, it doesn't mm. feel... While it's talking about women being commodified, it doesn't feel exploitive. Yeah. Um, and... I really <clears throat> liked that, but I also really liked how the narrative would be doing one thing and the visual would be doing another. So you've got a part where she's talking about, you know, just accept your your body and just kind of accept yourself and be fine with yourself while she's taping her face up in the mirror like she's mm. mimicking like uh, yeah. plastic surgery. And I also found it really important that she has this this podcast thing that she does because clearly she's not getting enough like accolades out of her life. So she has to go and get that applause. She has to get the attention elsewhere. So, I mean, good for her. Maybe she should switch to podcasting. She clearly has an audience. Yeah. That is such good points. I mean, it's the, exactly the subtlety of that weird contradiction actresses have between constantly getting shit on and needing to be perfect, yet telling themselves all the time Love yourself, love yourself, right. love yourself. You know, it's like when they don't love themselves, but they need to say it constantly, you know? And, and you see that. I mean, living in LA, you see that all the time. And you called it. You know, it, and she nailed that. You, you called should. it dark, but I don't think it's dark. I think it's just cold. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said first. Too. Yeah. 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 You're right. Um, dark is not the right word, but really. There was it's another true. scene that was really important to me where um, they're rehearsing and they have this very choreographed fight sequence and she turns a little too soon and she ends up getting hit. Mm -hmm. And she's sitting there bleeding and she's just apologizing. apologizing yeah. She's yeah, and she's saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's like taking complete blame. She's apologizing over and over. But he's also apologizing. Yeah. He says it's not okay, which yeah. I thought, right. but I interpreted that as, and he was so perfect too, because he's like this kind of heavy set actor guy who's such a stage actor, you know? Mm -hmm. And I interpreted that as him he wanted to do. See, no, I think you know that, what I no, mean. Like, I, like way, I think he wanted to hit her. I think that the way that the way I interpreted that is 
you said earlier that it was just sort it was sort of shot without any sort of judgment. It was just sort of like here it is, right? And that's sort of what that moment that was a perfect example of that true. in that moment. Yeah, yeah. It was like I'm not going to take a position yeah. here. I'm just gonna show both sides honestly. And I feel like two empathetic people, that's how you would react. Yeah, in that's that exactly how right? you really would react. It's like yeah. she feels bad because she's maybe you know, she's embarrassed and she's a little hurt and stunned and, and, and she doesn't want him to feel bad, which is, which is a very real thing. And he feels bad because he whacked her in the mouth, right? And he feels awful about it. And for all of the reasons that any sort of thinking and feeling male would feel bad about hitting a woman in that situation. Yeah. Um, or hitting anybody. I mean, it's right. an accident. You made somebody bleed. Like, you'd be freaked out. They'd be freaked out. Exactly. But it, it just was like... The fact that she felt that she needed to apologize so much. Mm. If it was me, I'd be like, ah, my bad, sorry, let's uh, fix that. (laughs) And I feel like most people I know are that way too, except every actress I know is the over-apologizer. And that feels really true. Because they need somebody to tell them it's not your fault. And that's what they're really looking for. Anyway, all right, this episode has been about 25 minutes too long. Um, But that's basically all the time we have today for Short on Shorts. We'd like to thank Jason so much for coming, but before we go, please tell us what's going on in your life. You seem like a really interesting dude, so I'm sure some good stuff. Well, uh, I don't want to go too on or too long with it, but um, I've been there's been a lot of films lately. It's been a really good time, and we have. I did a movie called Jacko's Home, which should be uh, next year. Uh, another one just finished called King Cobra, and uh, <laughs> one that's finally coming out next year called Jane Got a Gun. And um, we just finished Barista. We just finished the big LA premiere, which is going strong and it's good. And if you guys have a chance to check it out, it's in theaters and on iTunes right now. Yeah, but on iTunes, we will include links to that. It's a great so, show. So um, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, name our plant currently Mickey Frodo. slash Frodo. I'm going to go with Pubert. 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 That just came right out. That's fantastic. But you're considering it now. You're like, maybe. Right? Wow. Pubert. Yeah, it's Pubert. kind of pubert. It's kind of puby. Um, I think that's the third time we've made jokes about Bush on this show. Yeah. Oh. N- nobody watches till the end, so nobody's watching this anyway. But uh, if you are, check out the links below and uh, have a good one. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. If you want more information about how Short on Shorts works, or how you can submit your film for consideration, just click right here. And if you want to watch more episodes of Short on Shorts, click right here. See this area right here? Yep, right there. Click there. See you next time.